Hi everyone, we are super excited to be here and meet you all. Um, yeah, and thank you Maxon for having us, obviously. My name is Christina and next to me is Anna. And um, yeah, we are representing Data Projects today as the creative director. And, and the creative producer. So yeah, we are a studio working in 3D motion design. We started out in London and uh, operating remotely now. And we work at the intersection of 3D motion, VFX and graphic design. So yeah, our clients tend to be um, from the fashion, arts, lifestyle, tech and music industries. And for the past two years, we had the pleasure of working with companies such as YouTube, Nike, Remova, Away, Space 10, um, yeah, and also cultural institutions like One to One Festival in New Zealand. And it's always been quite important for us to keep kind of this um, balance between the type of projects we take on. So it's a mix of commercial jobs, but also more R&D and experimental projects we keep in tandem. And today we'd like to share some of our favorite projects and go more in depth to those. But first, I want to talk about briefly why starting a motion design studio and why are we conscious of branding it as female-led. And to answer these questions, um, I'll take you on a brief journey how I began. So during my master's in visual communication, I started to develop an interest in taking 2D typographic posters, books into three dimensional spaces. And I started to question the medium I was working with and how I could push the boundaries a bit further. So eventually I found that I had a passion for 3D software, specifically Cinema 4D and um, the possibilities it brought to enhance and elevate my image making. So these are very early versions of these experimentations. I started to take images from my favorite photographer, Daniel Zanwald, and attempted to yeah, bring his photographs in a 3D composition. To this day, I hope he uh, doesn't mind. I always credited him. Um, but yeah, I posted this experimentation on social media and it eventually got me my first um, freelance project, which was um, a project with Adidas where we applied kind of the same principle, um, merging a 2D layer into a 3D world. From there, another um, similar project came. Thankfully, this got never uh, released, but it um, yeah, helped me with my freelance career. And um, around the same time, the DigiGirl community was founded, which represents a global network of women, intersex, trans folk, and non-binary people who specialize in digital design, 3D, CGI, and extended realities. And this presented quite a good opportunity to meet a variety of peers within the industry that I may not have had access to before. So it was a really exciting time. And yeah, after joining the DigiGirl Collective, I was invited to join the team under Katy Taylor, who would be working on the new order campaign for Selfridges. And it explored the future of fashion and retail through the medium of digital art. So we began the project by recreating seven real-life garments into digital models. And these were all garments designed by well-known fashion houses that had not translated their collection into the 3D space before. Then we needed to implement those 3D garments into bespoke worlds. And the concept we looked at was how digital art and technology could enable the future of fashion and we wanted to create um, dystopian and utopian landscapes which would simulate this feeling of tranquility to terror, going from a mood board here with uh, tones of darker energy and also heavenly digital spaces and silky textures. So once we began the project, we received the samples from Selfridges and in order to study the physical properties um, of the garments 
and obviously shout out to Dan who was very happy to try them all on for us. <laughs> we, we studied where the buttons were, how it was draping, how it was folding so we could recreate it in the 3D space. So we animated the clothes that were worn by avatars for the campaign, but also we did a series of shots that wouldn't be worn by an avatar. So we researched visual references where clothing was either immersed in water or laid onto rocks or other type of environments. And here, some of our um, yeah, first simulation tests. And um, yeah, the garments were imported into Cinema 4D and Houdini to test um, our different simulations. We added fog. We we were testing how a garment would look if it would be immersed in water, or you can see here in the middle how it would kind of create from various pieces into one coming out of the water. Then we also created a number of accessories in um, Cinema 4D, and then really went into developing different environments um, until we were happy with the mood so as you can see here, the lighting really uh, makes a huge difference and affects the overall tone of the scene. Then I should mention that removing the avatar was quite a deliberate choice. So for us, it added an as aspect of surrealism, clothes walking on their own. If we would have um, had to design an avatar, it would have been quite distracting from the beautiful clothing. And also we liked how eerie it looked. So it really tied into this dystopian look we were going for. Yeah, and here's the end result of um, this campaign. The project was quite a challenging one from a technical perspective, um, especially ensuring that we had all these correct details when it came to the garments. But it was a lot of fun. Um, it was the first time I had ever worked in an all-female-led, um, female non-binary team. So it was obviously super gratifying to go through that process and see how collaborative it was. And yeah, you can see that the garments animate softly and slowly through the wind. We aim to create these quite impossible fabric motions to mesmerize the viewer throughout the film. And something you might also have been mesmerized by was the way the avatar's breasts jiggle. And you may be wondering how we did this. So with the avatars on this project, we used DAS. Um, you all know it, a huge library of pre-rigged avatars and 3D models that are available um, yeah, you can use for any project. And for some avatars, you can control the way the breasts jiggle. And in fact, for some of the female avatars, you can also control the way the ass jiggles. You can choose a few different types of avatars and poses. Maybe you want an avatar who's um, yeah, flirty, chatty and friendly hardworking but still looking sexy or you're looking for an avatar who knows what she wants or doesn't know what she wants the library gives you all the options or maybe you also want to choose between sexy stretching or sexy fighting with daggers um, yeah but to my point um, you can see that within the industry and the images we consume we are tuned to kind of a specific type or women, which personally for me has always been very tricky to relate to. And these 3D libraries that are available to small and mid-sized studios are often limited with their diversity, lacking a wide range of body types, proportions, skin tones, gender expressions. And yeah, we are simply viewing these models through the male gaze. So what you're seeing here, by the way, is um, um, a plugin that lets you adjust heels and seemingly only for women's feet. So the question is, 
Um, is our industry simply perpetuating the stereotypes that women and non-binary folks often fall under in real life, but now in digital spaces and imagery? And as my freelance career grew, I noticed that many of the incredible studios I admired were often not led or owned by women. And I worked for, the, for places like The Mill or Superimpose, and I noticed that the teams were predominantly male. Um, and this is not to say that they aren't amazing studios to work for. I always had impeccable experiences, but there was this constant question in my mind. So where are all the CGI women? And every project that I worked on, and I found myself to be one of the only female artists, I found that something needed to change. So two years ago, I felt like I had enough experience to start a studio. Some people may not think it's important, but um, I had a strong urge to brand it as female-led in order to point out that it's an issue and we are working on changing that. And the industry has been and currently still is uh, dominated by a visual language that sometimes feels a bit stark and austere. And I've never felt I have much of a connection to these aesthetics. So with the studio setup, we try and um, inject the softer energy and um, stepping away from this colder aesthetic. So we aim to challenge diversity and increase the visibility of women in digital design, and we aim to challenge the diversity shown within the images we create. So we see data projects as this playground to get more women inspired, to um, invite anyone to work with us in a relaxed, comfortable environment, as much as a fast-paced industry allows for that, obviously, but we are trying our best. But I guess I also have to be very honest and say that it's not always easy. I'm always second-guessing myself, asking questions like, who am I to start a studio when there are so many incredible people out there? What happens if I don't manage client expectations? What if I find out that running a business is not for me? And I think these questions are inevitable and very prominent and somehow as women we often have a higher level of self-doubt. But yeah, ultimately I'm very happy with where we are right now. So for the past two years um, I kept on going together with Anna and we hope it inspires other females to do the same. So yeah, um, now I'd like to share with you some of our favorite projects and in particular the rebranding and teaser development for one-to-one -one, um, festival. It's an electronic music festival in New Zealand and it brands itself as this three-day dance odyssey. So being passionate ravers ourselves, we had um, a lot of fun developing the concepts and understanding how to make the festival's appearance um, more striking and compelling for potential festival enthusiasts like ourselves. So our aim was to create this visual language that reflected the festival site in New Zealand. It's happening in these beautiful fields of South Wararapa and containing everything from ancient Kaikatea trees to port -a <laughs> to forest clearings and also a lot of concrete bunkers. So pretty much a stunning mix of brutalism and nature, which was eventually revealed to us during the concept phase. So we wanted to focus on these detailed crops of indigenous nature, showcasing their textures, variety of forms, and then have this interrupted by brutalist elements covered in reflective material that would then kind of mirror these natural surroundings. So creating a captivating sense of um, nature and brutalism. So yeah, from here, we started to develop the teaser sequence. We began to thoroughly research the native flora and fauna of New Zealand, and we recreated those uh, specific flowers in 3D. This, for example, is the Rava Rava New Zealand's honeysuckle plant. We also recreated the Gloriosa lily, 
and this is quite a uh, famous tree in New Zealand, the New Zealand Christmas tree. It's called Pohu Tukava in Maori. And from here, we started to rigging um, these plants for animation. So we were aiming for quite a tranquil mood. So everything you see in this teaser will be quite uh, kept in slow motion and flowing in the wind. And then we also sculpted a library of these um, yeah, brutalist assets we could then use as a base to build our scenes and merge them together with the natural objects. And these geometric assets were all built in Cinema 4D with volume measure, builder, additional smoothing layers, and yeah, applied noise shaders, and then taken into ZBrush and 3D code for final touches and details. We gave them also these rugged edges and surface imperfections to really create a more realistic look. And then, yeah, here are some first tests of how these two worlds could complement each other and our attempts of mirroring the nature around on these brutalist assets. And here are some more glitchy early tests. All of these uh, crops were done in Cinema 4D because we could really focus on highly, um, yeah, highly textured um, environments. And in terms of art direction, we chose the lighting and colors to best match a mood of warm, sunny, peaceful place, um, but also energetic tones and kind of fun vibes. Then we also wanted to show a time lapse occurring the teaser. So going from a cycle of daytime to more ravia, nighttime um, environments. And we did this through projecting some light effects onto these plants, working with LED lights, pulses, and shimmers. And this is the final result. There's also a second part to this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's yeah, a second part to this project, uh, which was developing the visual identity and branding. So we had to then experiment with incorporating the more 2D flat graphics into the 3D environments. And this little part of the presentation is um, yeah, less Maxon heavy, but as graphic designers, we still love to show how we integrate our 2D uh, graphics into 3D compositions. So for these graphic elements you will see, we looked at more brutalist geometric shapes as well as architectural maps of those buildings. So we worked with round shapes that represented a heat map of moving bodies from above and then all this came together with the help of the 3D scenes we created. And here are some very early tests for the typography you can see that kind of the rounder shapes also added a bit more dynamism and fluidity to the more rigid and blocky shapes. And yeah, from here, I will just skip through because we did a lot of tests um, to figure out what the right language was. This is also a collection of work in progress. We tested out different layouts, colors, typefaces, color combinations, as you can see. And then really went into yeah, um, doing experiments with the logo, separating it, bringing it back together. Here it's really based on brutalism, for example, but we felt it was a bit too too rigid and went back, tried, tried even more. 
until we felt it came to a language that was very playful and um, fun. And we're really happy with this. So by the end of our visual exploration, we landed on this graphic language that had a mix of bolder type that represented the brutalism fonts and more like finer, elegant fonts to represent the natural side. And um, yeah, we used some playful O's and elements that would be intermixed with the type. And then here's a look at the final templates for the lineup announcement and the artist tiles. And as you can see, this project really encompassed our love for graphic design and 3D motion in a way that was really rewarding and fun. So yeah, and I turn. Um, and uh, basically since Tata launched, and as we are labeling ourselves as a female-led studio, we have noticed that other companies uh, find us, um, like, have a desire to collaborate with us because of that reason. For example, there was a creative director at Nike that contacted us to create versatile visuals for an event celebrating females throughout history. Her rise highlighted the role of 13 sportswomen across sports as basketball, swimming, weightlifting, or track running. We decided to distill each sports key motif and design each scene to include the iconic swoosh logo to add in more details, while adhering to a minimalist aesthetic to create timeless visuals. Here you can see some of our R&D tests of this very experimental project. We created industrial sets and wanted to allude to the motion. We wanted the motion to allude to being on a gym. So you have a lot of these motion like, you know, things being stretched, pushed around as if you were punching them in a the gym. So you have inflated and deformed balls and foam blocks, only in slow motion because they like to keep things elegant. Uh, all of these was paired back, had a very paired back color combinations because we needed to adhere to the Nike 50th anniversary campaign um, brand guidelines. So you just have black and white and those orange highlights. The final animations were integrated on stage, but also printed for posters on social media. Um, earlier this year, we connected with Prowl, which is an LA-based product design company, after a Google event where we both presented our work. The similarities between our values on sustainability and promoting females in design were super aligned. Luckily, they were testing a new product precisely when we were looking for a biodegradable um, product to make some visuals for. We decided to make a teaser video to promote their new circular chair that's made from hemp. They sent us loads of assets, uh, loads of photos of the behind the scenes. They really wanted us to feel inspired by the materials they were testing, and it was great to have insight into how a sustainable chair gets crafted. We were asked to create a clinical spot, but we wanted it to push it a bit further and create an animation inspired by those how it's made videos. Maybe some of you reminded, remember those from the 90s. This, was, this meant we wanted to represent a whole circular process from assembly to the composition. We used Miro to draft our storyboards, testing different narratives, and then as Prowl was selectively picking each one of the chair's components, we tested how we could create the manufacturing process within Cinema 4D. These are some of our, for our first animation tests, both for the bubbles and viscous liquids. For this teaser, we wanted to translate, for example, how this PLA glue gets mixed with the hemp fibers, how the material is poured into the injection mold, and how the bio maze material changes color. Uh, we did loads of tests and wanted to create different designs. Uh, we tested many different versions of like the metal box, how we could integrate the, um, um, the branding. We really like to... Uh, add some unexpected details. So for example, in the middle of the material, you can just about see some fluorescent speckles. And of course, there was a lot of tests on simulations as well for this teaser. Um, 
we wanted to, for example, on the left, you can see the PLA material combined with the hemp fibers, or on the right, allude to the cushion, how it can easily be decomposed when you throw it in your back garden. We have complete creative freedom for this project, which is quite rare, as most of you know. <laughs> so we used it as an excuse to try an idea that was brewing with us for a while. We wanted to introduce these robotic camera movements and intercalate those with calm pan shots. This was an effective way to allude to the industrial environment where the product gets made without adding an actual robotic arm. Uh, you've probably seen loads of the new adverts now have a robotic arm, so we really didn't want to be repeating it. So we just hinted at its presence through motion and edit. It all came beautifully together combined with bright futuristic lights. Now, this summer, our long-term partner, Way, asked us to develop an extensive campaign for the newly designed suitcases featuring new colors and design details. We needed a plan that allows us to execute all assets under six weeks. So our idea was to showcase the suitcases rolling in an imaginary bright kite walk. The sleek and empty white space allowed us to play with a very graphical visual language highlighting the bold new colors. Um, this is a little bit similar to the sugar waves back in the 2000s with a much lower frame rate. I believe that you should never underestimate the power of what you let your kids watch. Having everything happening on this white set, the task was to surround this hero product with elements that related to travel. Actually, in this process, we realized that almost anything can be related to travel. Here you can see some of our early style frames. For this one, we wanted to keep everything quite minimal and elegant by distilling nature into a more graphical approach. We crafted well-balanced compositions with perfectly rendered natural elements. This was our biggest project to date. We were asked to create seven motion assets, including a TV commercial, overlay tap animations, craft over 20 unique stills, and all of these added to around 80 format designations. So yes, time was of the essence. We designed all assets within Cinema 4D, creating travelscapes ranging from city trips, monuments, museums, outdoor activities, you name it. We went to mountaintops and deep down to check some co marine corals. Yeah, and for our scenes, in order to make them very detailed and full of variety of flora, we use the matrix object a lot. Um, and following, I'll show you briefly how we're often designing our scenes to make them look most realistic in terms of scattering of natural material, but then also infusing some, yeah, a surreal twist with vibrant colors. So, We've got different kinds of clover leaf variations here, and we're going to use them to cover these rock formations. We make sure to put them under a null to contain it. Then we've got our connector object with our rocks underneath in a nice composition. And this is also important to use the connector object to combine it in one mesh. Then we create the matrix object, set it to custom objects, drag our clover leaves into it, and then adjusting, obviously, the amount and scale until it feels right. So lots of testing. And then we add a shader effector to our matrix object to distribute the grass. Um, and then we create a custom shader with a layer, and this layer serves as a mask. So we then create a circular gradient in which we can distribute the black and white areas. We also add a little distort layer to introduce variations in the gradient. 
making it look more imperfect. And afterwards, we add a random effector to introduce um, a bit of randomness to the grass blades orientations. And then it seemed to us that the grass was too evenly spread still, and there was yeah, some empty spots missing. So we added a plane effector that would drive the empty spots on the rocks. And again, we add a shader field, we add noise, we play around with the scattering until it feels right and looks most organic and natural. Like you can see here. And then to create the multicolored grass, we um, implement a color user data node into our material. We select our MoGraph color and add a ramp node in which we can then play with the real colors. We also create a color layer that will allow us to mix our ramp with the original grass color and texture map. And then, yeah, play with different types of blend modes to find the suitable result. And yeah, this is how we created pretty much all of our scenes in this uh, project, adding detail and surrealism to it. And as you can see that, yeah, cinema really gives us the opportunity to design the scenes on the go. While we were developing all of the art direction, we are also simultaneously testing all different kinds of animation to fit within the campaign's aesthetic. Uh, we used quick preview renders to define the narrative, camera, and pacing. For this specific project, it, there was an import, a fine line between fun and cringe, so we really needed to test this. For example, in the middle shot, you can just see like a um, suitcase kind of rolling on its own. The client found this to be a bit too independent or spooky. As you know, R&D and experimentation are essential for the design process. At Data, we like to take great care of all the small details. Testing timings, edits, and transitions are essential to make sure everything runs smoothly and before we set up each independent scene. Here are some animation and simulation previews and a little fail where the plants fly away, pestered by butterflies. It's important for us to ensure all the transitions are elegant and smooth, and we actually like to build them in Cine4D rather than in post. So we can take um, all of full advantage of uh, all the depth of focus and inbuilt lens that Redshift makes available. We really love to, the analog touch it gives to the images. Here are some of our, the versions for a specific animation. It's quite obvious how it evolves over time, you know, if you go from the left to the right. This reflects all of the client changes we had for this project. Not all of them, though. Here's a beautifully detailed final play preview. And the end result, before and after color grade. We exported this project as EXR sequences so we could take advantage of the full color range in post. This was super useful as we had 12 color ways that needed to be perfectly matched across all scenes. Of course, this is a bit challenging considering all the light and landscape variations we had. And because we only had six weeks, basically being able to control color in post was a life savior. And here is the final 30 seconds TV commercial. Thank you. <laughs> um, now that we are done with our portfolio presentation, we wanted to touch on our values and why we are creating even more images. This is a question that crosses our minds a lot, because in a world overflown with stimuli, what's our mission? 
In short, when we both started our careers in 3D, it was very rare to see any women in creative or leading positions. So now we want to open doors to more women and non-binary individuals into the blooming industry that's 3D motion design. You can say that the images are the medium in this case, not the end goal. So the other projects exist to break down the barriers that often prevent individuals, particularly women, from entering and thriving in the 3D world, create a space where technology is not seen as intimidating or exclusive, inspire and empower individuals to take control of their own digital futures, aiming to shift the disparity in a male-dominated industry. And how do we run data, you may ask? Leading by example, we want to create a safe work environment where collaboration is encouraged through empathy, trust, and radical candor. Yeah, and we couldn't leave this booth without giving some screen time to awesome women who work in the 3D space. We are so inspired by observing fellow women who are working and succeeding in the CGI space, but there is still a clear lack of female-led, female-owned practices um, in the spaces we operate in. And we feel as though it needs more representation also at a director's level to yeah, show young aspiring designers that this is a career that anyone can participate in, enjoy, and not feel like they aren't seen. So yeah, we have this long list of collaborators we um, yeah, are dying to work with in the future. So we wanted to share and celebrate some of them with you. And of course, this doesn't include everyone in the industry, but we're excited how this list grows every day. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.